there are so many ETFs out there and maybe you just don't know in which one to invest. Why not create your own? I'm going to show you how to do it with Alpaca's API. Alpaca is a developer for a startup focused on building open APIs for stock and crypto trading, investing, and embedding. I'm going to attach in the description the link to the article if you guys want to follow along. Alpaca has over 20 coins that you can invest in. So the way that we will create our ETF is by allocating our portfolio to a basket of coins, which will comprise our ETF. Then we regularly balance it to help keep our allocation balanced across each coin. Take a look. So as always, you need an Alpaca account, which I already got, and I need my keys for right here. And I'm going to be using Google Colab for this video. Obviously, you can use whatever you want. I just like Google Colab because I can get the plots right there. And if I use terminal or visual code, I won't be able to. So I'm just going to use it. So let's start. So the first part is to install the Alpaca Trade API. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it. I'm going to run it. Okay, now that it's run, I'm going to create another one and I'm going to copy the second part, which I need my keys for that. So I'm going to get them. Okay, I added them. By the way, these are my paper API keys. And you can see right here that I'm calling my paper API, right? So I'm going to run this. Okay, so it ran correctly. So I'm going to create a new block for the code. Okay, now I go to my article and... I can see here, so what I'm gonna get is, I want the info of the coin, right? So what I'm gonna use for right now is Bitcoin, just to get information that the way that we're gonna see it, right? So I'm gonna copy here, and I'm gonna input it right here. We called it Alpaca Client here, so it matches right here, and we have the crypto bars, and we call our parameters, right? We have Bitcoin, and we have the time frame for the day, but you can use whatever time frame you want and I'm doing 2020 to 2022. And also I need to input another line called bars because in color, if I don't put bars, it's not gonna run if, let me show you. Yeah, it didn't run, so it ran, but it just didn't show the, the actual graph. If you can see right here, we have the picture and we can see all the info. You can see right here that I get different exchanges. So if you want, you can mention here just the, the exchange chat type and you can say Coinbase and you'll just get the info for Coinbase, not FTXU or ERSX, right? So let's go to our next one. And you can just copy right here this stuff and so you don't need to retype it. It depends whatever you want to do. So now I'm going to show you the coins that we have and we're going to get the info for all of them, right? So first we're going to call them. So we're going to call collect coins and just to get the, the variable for it. Okay. And like I said, I'm doing 2020 to 2022. Okay. So now that we have our coins, we're going to go into the next step, which is we're going to plot all of the coins that we have and an ETF basically to see what we would have right now if we would have created this ETF in 2020, right? So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to create another block. I'm going to paste it and let me fix our client. And since we're plotting here, I'm going to import pandas as PD because we're asking right here, the pandas, right? So I'm going to click play. I'm going to run this. Okay, so now that we have the plot, I'm going to go over the code and break it down a little bit so that we can go through it. So I'm actually going to remove this and I'm going to put the F and let's see. Okay, if you see here, we're asking for each coin in our coins variable. We're asking to get the bars, the time frame of the day because we want it on a daily basis with the exchange. Then we want the daily return on the closing time, right? And we want the percentage change of each day. So we want to get the percentage change to calculate the cumulative return. Basically what we're doing is we want to find the compounded total return over the period and we need to multiply all the daily returns together. So we're going to calculate the compound change by adding one to each of the daily returns before we multiply them, right? So we do the add the point add one function to get the daily returns and then we do the cumulative product which will then multiply all the returns together, right? We're good there. So since we added the one in the beginning, we're going to subtract the one to get back to a percentage change. Enter some code so that I can get so that I can get it bigger. I added the drop in A. So if you see here, I'm going to run this. 
you can see here, for example, we have not available, right? But if you see here, we have April 14 and then we have April 21. So in between those dates, we had no info for any of the coins we have right here. So it got removed, right? Then we have this information. And now what I want to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to get the balanced ETF info. And I'm going to run it. And you can see right here, we have the balanced ETF. So right here, we don't have it. So I didn't add it. So basically saying we would have had six times what we had in 2020. And then after this, I'm going to plot it. And I'm doing DF plot. And let's run it. And we can see it right here. So I came to the top part of our coding and I import this matplotlib so that I could make this graph bigger and we can have a better look at it. And we can see, for example, Dutch, how it went up and it went down. But we can see our ETF here is in orange. We still would have made money, probably not as much as Dutch, but not as much as the loss. So you can see that there. So now that we saw the graph, we're going to go to comparing our strategies and we're going to use the sharp ratio. So for that, we need each coin compared to a value, right? To a certain value. And the value that we're going to choose, we're going to choose the 10 year treasury rate, but you can compare it to whatever you want, the S&P 500 or whatever you want. So we're going to use 2%. There we go. And then we want it in descending order. So which one performed better and which one performed worse. So you can see, for example, the dollar performed worse compared to the 2% rate. And you can see here balance ETF. So yeah, you can see here that, for example, if we would have done Dutch, you can see here the spike, but in the long term, it's not as good as our ETF. So now that what we're going to do is we're actually now going to create our ETF or balanced ETF. We're going to be rebalancing it. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it here. The code is already written. As always, you can go back and change it. So if you can see here, we're rebalancing it. We're getting our account info. So I want to know what my buying power is. But here, actually, the code has 95% of my buying power to get crypto. And I'm just going to change that to 10%. I'm going to keep 90 cash just for this purpose. And then we're going to get, okay, the desired allocation is our buying power that we named. I said 10% of that divided by the number of coins. So if we have 21 coins, it's the 10%, which is about uh, 10,000 divided by the 21. And then we have the current value. We're going to get the position value of each coin. And then we're going to allocate the, the money on each of them, right? And if it says, okay, if the delta is positive, we're going to buy. If not, we're going to sell. So now we're saying, okay, if it's notional, we're going to rebalance it each time. And it's probably all, they're all going to be notional. So it's just saying here, okay, submit the order for each coin and which side and notional, right? And then we're going to get the position value. What it's saying is return position market value set. If there is no position open, then an error is going to throw it our way. Um, indentation. Let's see here. Okay. One more indentation. There we go. Okay, so I fixed the indentations and it, it ran. We can see here the check mark. Okay, so now that we're done with that, we're going to schedule it for it to be rebalancing it every week. It's what we chose every Monday, but you can rebalance it as often as you want. So we're going to copy it and we're going to paste it. We're going to import schedule time, schedule every Monday. Yeah, let's do that. I like every week. Rebalance crypto ETF. Okay, and finally, we're saying while true. So we're basically saying it's looping forever and scheduled run pending. It's always pending for one second every time. So each second it's running and see if it fills the order of Monday at 1030, right? So it's running, running, running until it's Monday at 1030 and then it rebalances it. Okay, so we run it and I know what's wrong with it. Let's see. I need to s install the schedule. So I'm just going to go in the beginning. Let's do it here. And let's run that and see if that works. Okay. And we go we click play. Okay. Anyways, this is it. We did it. We go to our account and we go to paper positions and we can see the stuff that we bought. And that's it. Let me know if you have any questions. Comment below and like the video. Thanks.